running let have a discussion on the current affairs so the first topic that will take for discussion today each about the new law called the 180 128th amendment bill 2023 with the president signed it recently the PT law the intends to reserve one third of the total number of seats in the Lok Sabha and state place legislative assembly and the national capital of the legislative assembly for whom that's called the Women Reservation Bill. As it was formally known has been renamed as the Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhiyam. So, Prime Minister Modi named it as Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhiyam or the Women Reservation Bill. And after being passed by the Parliament, the President has given his consent to the bill. Okay, it intends to reserve one third of the total number of seats in the Lok Sabha, State Legislative Assembly, and the National Capital Territory of Delhi Legislative Assembly for women. The Women Reservation Bill, as it is formally known, has been renamed as Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhini. Historical debate about women reservation in politics. It has been a long struggle for women in India for the right to equal participation in politics. While there has been near unanimity among women, as far as the goal of equal representation in legislative body is concerned, there are several differences on the approaches and methods, especially on the issue of preservation of women for the achievement of these goals. Stalwarts such as Sarojin Naidu, Muthulakmi Reddy and others in the pre-independence period had diverging and complex view on the issue of preservation for women in legislative bodies. Okay. The Constituent Assembly debates feature some leading women who registered the idea of preservation for women in any form. Rajkumari Amrita Kaur, for instance, was of the opinion that such measures would weaken women's self-esteem and confidence while also threatening the goal of national unity. New phase for women voice after 1980, the revitalized women movement, the 1980s, as well as the changing political environment of India in the 1990s, particularly the North India, generated new ideas about quota for women or reservation for women in the parliament and legislature. And the women political activists within political parties and civil society organizations generally agreed on the need for measures to increase women's political participation. There are sharp disagreement about the role of caste-based quotas in the Women's Reservation Bill, which was introduced in Parliament in 1996. Okay, caste-based reservation, okay, was introduced in 1996. The struggle for Dalit, Adivasi and other marginalized women revealed that women face exclusion going to a range of discriminatory institutions such as caste, religion, class, age and aptitude. So, this is where
ओके सो दिस इज स्ट्रिबल दैट वोमेन फेस एक्सक्लूजन टू इन टू रेंज ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन कास्ट रिलीजन क्लास एज एंड एप्टीट्यूड The inability to reach an agreement on the issue of caste-based quota within the proposed women's reservation bill in its earlier form saw the bill languish in the parliament until now. Significance of the women's reservation bill: the gender equality, historical underrepresentation. Historically, women have been significantly underrepresented in India's political landscape. This underrepresentation. perpetuates gender inequality as it restricts women's ability to influence policies and decisions okay this under representation perpetuates gender inequality means so women are not properly represented in the parliament and the state assembly and that was so they are under represented so in proportion to their population or their numerical strength so they are not properly represented in the parliament or in the state assembly okay political empowerment the women reservation bill is a proactive measure to ensure that women have a fair opportunity to participate in the highest level of decision making in the country promoting gender equality in politics because they are numerically okay so so numerically they are half of the population but when it comes to representation in the parliament and legislative body of the state the number is very very less political empowerment the women reservation bill is a proactive measure to ensure that women have a fair opportunity to participate in the highest level of decision making in the country promoting gender equality in politics symbolic importance it signifies that indian society recognizes the values Uh, recognizes and value the contribution of women in politics sending a message that women's voice and perspectives are essential in shaping the nation's future empowerment women's reservation bill empowers women by allowing them equal access to the political arena it uh, dismantle conventional barrier and prejudice that may have previously hindered women from entering politics such a social norm and a lack of chances improving political skill as more women enter politics and gain experience their leadership and governance skill improves this empowerment extend beyond politics okay so as more women enter politics and gain experience their leadership and governance skill improve the empowerment extends beyond politics as women who achieve success in politics can serve as a role model for others spawning increased engagement in various variety of disciplines okay, from home to abroad policy influence through political participation women gain the power to influence policies that directly impact their lives and those of their communities this empowerment translate into tangible changes in areas such as healthcare education gender based violence and economic opportunities diverse perspectives addressing gender specific issues increase female representation in uh, politics brings attention to gender specific issues that may have been overlooked in the past women often advocate for uh, policies related to uh, maternal health uh, child care gender based violence and economic opportunities that directly affect women and families so because uh, gender specific issues so increase women representation will definitely bring uh, better uh, security for the women because their wider participation 
we definitely Okay, so genetic uh, specific issues, okay, so that will improve. Then enhancing decision making, diverse perspectives leads to more comprehensive and balanced decision making. When women are actively involved in policy making, the resulting laws and regulations are more likely to consider the needs and interests of the entire population, not just segment of it. So it is quite natural. Okay, so social and cultural change, so enhancing, enhancing decision making, diverse perspectives leads to more comprehensive and balanced decision making. When women are actively involved in policy making, the resulting laws and regulations are more likely to consider the needs and interests of the entire population, not just a segment of it. Social and cultural change, female political leaders can challenge traditional gender roles and norms, inspiring uh, broader social and cultural change. The presence in politics can help break down stereotypes and create a more inclusive and gender equal society. Concerns have been raised about its implementation after 2026. The Bajpayee government revised Article 82 the 84th Amendment to the Constitution in 2002, thus prohibiting any delimitation of constituency before 2026. So, delimitation exercise is conducted normally after each election. So, that was Okay, so uh, this means that the provision of the bill under consideration can only be implemented after the delimitation of Lok Sabha constituency based on the population, based on the census conducted after 2026. That means if things go well, so 2031 will be the next census. In 2031, census will be there, then will be delimitation, then they will implement it. Multiple variables and the lack of a clear schedule have raised doubts about the legislative's aim. Okay.
Okay, so uh, this means that the provision of the bill in the consideration can only be implemented after delimitation Lok Sabha constituency based on population, based on a census conducted after 2026. Multiple variables and the lack, lack of a clear schedule have raised doubts about the legislation's aim. Although it has been passed, but its implementation was too delayed. See 2023 and this can be implemented after 2031 means after more than 2031, then delimitation, then after that should be definitely I don't so after law much long, that means maybe so uh, after more than 10 years. The way forward, the passage of the bill must be contextually within the prevalent political rhetoric that strives to respect, protect, and uh, venerate uh, women while uh, remaining indifferent to the numerous ways in which women are bad from work, exposed to violence, both at home and public, and subjected to sexual harassment. Okay, so women are viewed as passive beneficiary of the state uh, handouts rather than engage as agential citizens with right. In such a context, the Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhiniyam 2023 is a gift rather than a long denied right of women. It must be viewed in the perspective of a society wrestling with the erosion of basic civility and growing intolerance of differences. So, uh, this is a very good step, but its implementation because of its time gap each posing doubt over its benefit that will be coming so late, so putting lot of question mark on its credibility. Fine. Okay, so uh, so the Nari Shakti Bandhan Adhiniyam is a gift rather than a long denied right to movement. It must be viewed in the perspective of a society resting with the erosion of basic civility and growing intolerance of differences. Conclusion, however, 
the strength of democratic forces outside parliament and the state assembly should determine whether or not these women are able to set the agenda and bring their issue to the table rather like the panchayat raj and urban local bodies so the the panchayat sarpanch sarpanch pati concept will go again to sarpanch mp and sarpanch mla so that that sorry uh, the mla pati and uh, mp pati then the budget uh, objective of this legislation will be nullified fine global dispute settlement indian appellate review among its many commitment the recently concluded g20 declaration reiterated the need to pursue wto reform to improve all of its functions and conduct uh, proactive discussions to ensure a fully and well functioning dispute settlement system accessible to all members by 2024 because the united states has blocked the appointment of appellate body members the wto dispute settlement system which is designed as a two tier panel come appellate body structure has been operable since 2019 because united states has blocked the appointment of appellate body members that is why this uh, two tier come appellate body uh, of the wto remain in operable since 2019 the wto dispute settlement system which allow for appellate review and provides means to enforce judgment has issued over 493 rulings since its inception in 1995 since the wto was created in 1995 so 493 a uh, rulings have been given by this dispute settlement mechanism to put this in context the international court of justice has only heard 190 cases since its inception or its inception 1947 so 190 cases by icj since 1997 but 493 cases ruling by the uh, dispute settlement uh, system of wto since 1995 The appellate body has played a critical role in providing consistency and predictability in verdicts, hence restoring trust in the WTO dispute settlement process. While the commitment expressed in the G20 declaration is heartening, whether it will have an appellate process or just be a one-stage panel process, given Washington's continued opposition to an appellate review process, remains to be seen. On the ISDS. Uh, uh, this uh, the, while the future of this WTO appellate process is unknown, another area of international law in the early stages of an appellate process is international investment law through investor state dispute resolution, a common component of bilateral investment treaties. The ISDS is now the primary method for resolving international investment law issues. India's experience with the ISDS has been mixed with five adverse hours, four in favor, and several. ongoing claims okay so india has trust on the wto india has trust on this mechanism because so uh, although it has given some verdict uh, where india uh, which went against india but still india has trust on this okay so india's experience with icj has been mixed with five adverse hours although it has given five adverse hours against india but still india has trust on this and uh, in comparison to the award given in india's favor so the adverse hours are more but still india has trust and faith on it benefit benefits of this appellate review a critical structural facet of this icds mechanism is that it operates through ad hoc and one of arbitration tribunal without any appellate review in international investment law hundreds of IC, icds tribunals operating under different arbitral um, arbitral institutions have on several occasions offered diverging interpretation of the same treaty provisions likewise these tribunals have reached opposite conclusions despite interpreting 
and apply the same treaty to the same fact. The absence of an appellate review mechanism has meant that inconsistent and incoherent decisions and legal reasonings dot the landscape of international investment law. This has caused instability and improbability for states and foreign investors, making the regime chaotic. An appellate review mechanism will allow for rectifying errors of law and harmonizing diverging interpretations. It will have the power to uphold, modify or reverse the decision of the first tier tribunal and thus bring coherence and consistency, which in turn will infuse predictability and certainty into the ICDS system. And appellate mechanism will also be better than existing mechanism, such as the annulment proceedings, which only apply to arbitrations administered by the International Center for Settlement of Investment Dispute, IC, uh, ICSID of the uh, World Bank Group. India's position, although India has not made an official comment on the subject, India presumably accepts the concept of the ICDS appellate uh, review because Article 29 of the Indian model uh, BIT uh, mentioned. Given India's worries regarding inconsistency and incoherence in the ICDS system, India will benefit from the establishment of an appellate review mechanism at the regular place. Okay, so uh, since India's goal has always been to construct a rule-based global order, so it should support an appellate review that will give government and investors more trust in international investment law. And WTO as it becoming uh, credible internationally, this mechanism will further in enhance the credibility of WTO as an organization. Then the uh, Cornocarpus planet the Gujarat government has banned the planting of the ornamental cornocarpus uh, tree in forest or non-forest area, citing their adverse impact on environment and human health. Cornocarpus uh, is a rapidly spreading alien mangrove plant. Cornocarpus uh, uh, is a genus of two flowering plants in the uh, Cambriteca family that are native to tropical regions of the world. One of the species is a common mangrove, whereas the other is found only along the southern Red Sea coast, where it grows alongside seasonal rivers. The, this uh, is native to the tropical American shore north of Bermuda. Okay, this uh, uh, Lanipolis is native to Somalia and Yemen, and it is grown in the eastern and northern Africa, as well as in the Arabian Peninsula. Why it is banned? Earlier, Telangana to has banned the plant species. Research report that highlighted adverse impact, disadvantages of this species on environment and human health. Tree of this species flower in winter and spread pollens in the nearby area. It is learned that this is causing disease like cold, cough, asthma, allergy, etc. Roots of the species go deep inside the soil and develop extensively, damaging telecommunication lines, drainage lines, and freshwater system. It also kills of competition. Within a decade, it has taken over the Dirli Ridge, killing the native tree like the Acacia, Duck, Akadam, uh, uh, Amaltas, Flame of the Forest, etc. Along with the tree, disappear the fauna, birds, butterflies, leopards, uh, porcupine, and jackals. They have also disappeared with these plants. The tree also depletes the water table of the area it is planted in. So, taking all these in consideration, so the state government banned planting of this particular tree, which is allied to India. Then, Urban uh, Sip Asia uh, uh, Forum. Recently, the first uh, Urban Sip Forum Asia was held in New Delhi. The primary objective was to provide training and capacity building to regional cities for integrated and sustainable urban development. Urban Shift is a, a global environment facility funded program.
Okay, so uh, the primary objective was to provide training and capacity building to regional cities for integrated and sustainable urban development. Urban Shift is a global environment facility funded program, uh, GF funded program with uh, urban development and WRI cross center for sustainable cities. It is led by the United Nations Environment Program and implemented in partnership with the C40 cities. Uh, International Council for Local Environment and Initiative, the UNDP, Asian Development Bank, and the World Bank 3, Brent, Brent Pool. Okay, then the NUR 3 satellite, Iran recently launched NUR 3 imaging satellite into space. So, Iran launched this satellite. Iran has created an imaging satellite, it is a spy satellite with possible surveillance capability, blustering Iran's space capabilities. Its orbit is 450 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The three-stage uh, quasade or image uh, message carrier launched it. The spacecraft's two predecessors, NUR-1 and NUR-2, launched atop the quasade rocket in April 2022 and March 2022 respectively. This is the third in the series. NUR-1 returned to Earth on April 22nd. However, NUR-2 remained functioning and may collab uh, collaborate with the NUR-3 when it becomes operational. Who carried the launch? The launch was carried out by the aerospace arm of the Iranian Parliamentary Revolutionary Guard. The Guard operates its own space program parallel to Iran's regular armed forces and answer only to the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini. It launched, launched uh, its first satellite in space in April 2020. It is called the NUR-1. Then the uh, uh, Kalipos mission, the National Aeronautics Space Administration of USA, NASA, has announced the termination of the Kalipos Calypso mission, which studied climate, weather, and air quality. So what? It studied the climate, weather, and air quality. The Calypso cloud aerosol LIDAR and infrared pathfinder satellite observation is a mission dedicated to studying how clouds and aerosols impact the Earth climate. It is a joint project between the NASA uh, and the CNES, Center for National uh, uh, it is uh, spotless, uh, the French space agency. Okay, so uh, so it is NASA and the CNS of uh, France launched in 2006. The Calypso is a satellite-based observatory. Scientists are using data from the uh, Calypso to construct 3D models of the atmosphere that improve our ability to predict future climate change. The Calypso had been part of a constellation of spacecraft called the A Train, including Aqua, Aura, and Parasol spacecraft dedicated to studying the earth weather and environment. Instrumentation, it carried the uh, Kalio a two wavelength polarization sensitive LIDAR uh, uh, along with two passive sensors operating in the visible and thermal infrared uh, spectral regions. The LIDAR emitted pulses of laser light and measured the amount of light that was scattered back by clouds and aerosols. This information was used to create vertical profiles of cloud and aerosol properties such as uh, their uh, height, thickness and optical depth. Uh, Kalio is the first LIDAR to provide long-term atmospheric measurement from Earth's orbit. This information helps scientists create three-dimensional profiles of cloud and aerosol distributions. The mission recorded
Okay, so this mission recorded more than 10 billion LiDAR measurement, measurements and helped create thousands of scientific reports over the 17 years of its operation. In 17 years of operation, it has contributed a lot. The researchers use a unique technique called the uh, suck dear sick uh, to successfully extract uh, uh, CRIC RNA from the HIV1 infested uh, T cells and identified a specific. Uh, then the uh, antimeter uh, recently some experiments have shown that antimeter falls uh, uh, conf confirming, confirming it another component of the general theory then uh, antimatter uh, it is the same as ordinary matter except that it has an opposite electric charge. It is called the antimatter. It is also known as the mirror matter because it has an opposite charge. For instance, an electron which has a negative charge as an antimeter, its partner known as a positron. A positron is a particle uh, with the same mass as an electron but a positive charge. The antimatter for particles corresponding to electrons, protons and neutrons are called the positrons. Anti protons and anti neutrons. Collectively, they are referred to as antiparticles. Uh, these antiparticles can combine to form anti atoms and, in principle, could even form antimatter regions of our universe. Matter and antimatter cannot coexist at close range for more than a small fraction of a second because they collide with and annihilate each other, releasing large quantity of energy in the form of gamma rays or ele uh, elementary particles. Antimatter is created along with the matter after a big bang. Human have created antimatter particles using ultra high speed collisions and huge particle accelerator uh, such as the Large Hadron Collider which is located outside Geneva and operated by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. There are also naturally provided uh, produced antiparticles made uh, sporadically throughout the universe. Then the next topic is about the question about ethics and studies is case study. You are the district collector. This is collector of a drought not area. The government has announced a relief package for the farmers which includes waiving up their loans and providing them with uh, free seeds and fertilizer. However, you find that out that some of the local politicians and officials are misusing the funds and diverting the resources for their personal gain. They are also threatening the farmer who complain or refuse to cooperate with them. As a responsible officer, how will you deal with this uh, situation? Explain the ethical issue involved and of course of action you will take. Introduction. The situation described in the case study is a clear example of corruption, nepotism and abuse of power by the local politicians and the officials. It is also a violation of the rights and interests of the farmers were already suffering from the adverse effect of drought. As the district collector, I have a duty to ensure that the relief package reaches the intended beneficiaries and the public funds are utilized properly and transparently. The ethical issues involved in this situation are honesty and integrity. As a civil servant, I have to uphold the values of honesty and integrity in my work, expose and prevent any malpractices or irregularities in the implementation of the relief package and resist any pressure or temptation to compromise with the corrupt elements or uh, to overlook their wrongdoings. Accountability and transparency. As a public servant, I have to be accountable and transparent to the people and the government to ensure that the relief package is distributed fairly and equitably among the eligible farmers and maintain proper records and documentation of the funds and resources allocated and uh, utilize uh, and report any deviations or discrepancies to the higher authorities and take corrective measures. Empathy and compassion. As individual, it is essential.
Okay, so empathy and compassion as individual, it is essential to empathize and sympathize with the challenges faced by farmers who are experiencing hardship and distress as a result of the drought. Okay, so uh, uh, one must demonstrate compassion and sensitivity towards their needs and concern, actively listening to their problems and ensure they receive timely and sufficient assistance and support. Justice and fairness, as a leader, I have to ensure that justice and fairness are done to all the stakeholders involved in this situation protect the right and interest of the farmers from uh, any exploitation or discrimination by the local politicians and officials and also take strict action against those who are involved in corruption or misappropriation of funds or resources. The course of action I will take in this situation are conduct an inquiry. I will conduct an inquiry. Okay, so conduct inquiry. Uh, uh, into the allegation of corruption and mismanagement in the implementation of the relief package and will collect evidence and uh, testimonies from the various sources such as the farmers, officials, NGO, media, etc. and verify the facts and figure related to the fund uh, related to the funds and resources allocated and utilized. I will indefinitely uh, I'll uh, in, uh, identify the culprits and quantify the extra extent of involvement. Take action. Based on the finding of the inquiry, I will take appropriate action against those who are found guilty of corruption and misappropriation of funds or resources. I will initiate disciplinary or legal proceedings against them. As per the rules and regulations, I will also recover the money or asset that uh, they have siphoned off from the public exchequer. Redress grievances. I will redress the grievances of the farmers who have been cheated or deprived of their gainful share, rightful share of the relief package. I will ensure that they receive their due benefits as soon as possible and will also provide them with alternative sources of income or livelihood such as employment generation schemes, skill development program, etc. Improve governance. I will improve the governance and administration of the relief package by introducing reforms and innovation. I will adopt measures such as online administration, verification, monitoring, auditing, etc. to ensure efficient effectiveness transparency and accountability. I will also involve civil society organization, media, etc. to create awareness, participation and feedback among the farmers. Then coming to the conclusion, the case study presents a challenging situation for me as a district collector. However, by applying ethical principles and values, I can overcome this challenge successfully. By doing so, I can not only fulfill my professional obligations, but also serve my professional uh, convictions. Okay, so this is a well uh, answered uh, topic uh, for the ethical question. Okay, now the following statement regarding the African Union, less than half of the African country of Africa are part of African Union, which is wrong, because African Union is an association of 55 countries of Africa, so it's not less than half. So, Sitre Declaration called for establishment of the African Union, right? Recently, African Union was admitted as a member of the G20, which is hosted by India. It's a very big achievement. India being the host. And did uh, propose to add African Union as a member of G20 and it was accepted. So, opening the progress for the African continent to join the group of the most advanced countries of the world. 
Okay, so here only two are correct because option one is incorrect. So two and three are correct. Two are correct. The answer is B. Then question uh, of public statement regarding the provision of the e-waste management rule 2022. Uh, producers of electronic goods have to ensure that some percentage of their electronic waste is collected and recycled. That is correct. The Central Pollution Control Board should conduct testing of all electrical and electronic equipment, verify the compliance and reduction of hazardous substance provisions. This is not in this is not correct so because one is correct and two is incorrect. So, so option will be B. Then uh, uh, antimatter is different from the ordinary matters because antimatter has an opposite electric charge. Okay, so answer is uh, B. Antimatter has an opposite electric charge. Then, because of the following statement regarding the uh, Calypso mission, it is a mission dedicated to exploring the outer planets of the solar system. Wrong. Okay. The joint between European Union and uh, ISRO is also wrong. Okay. So, both here are, are incorrect. So, uh, the, this, this uh, mission, okay, the Calypso mission, as it is, uh, as we have discussed it, Okay, so it was uh, called the cloud aerosol lidar. Okay, so it is a mission which was uh, by NASA and the uh, uh, CNES of uh, France, and it is uh, it is to study. Uh, this was created to study the climate, weather, and the air quality. Here both are incorrect. Okay, so here neither is correct. So it is D the right answer. But the following statement began the aspirational block program. It aims to en at enhancing governance and improving the quality of life across the district in the country. Uh, so, question number uh, five. Okay, it is it is, it is incorrect. It is uh, attained. Uh, it is, it will be attained by converging existing schemes, defining outcomes, and monitoring them on a constant basis. So, it, this is the block. So, uh, not the district. So, block is the unit, not the district. So, only two is correct. One is incorrect. Okay, then which of the following country created the Noor 3 imaging satellite? It was Iran. Learn this. The third one, Noor 3, Noor 1, Noor 2, and Noor 3. You can 2 and 3 are right now active. Uh, guess the following statement regarding the e cabinet system. It is a software uh, site that allows state government to hold cabinet meeting online. Uh, that's right. The National Informatics Center created it. So here both are correct. Okay. Then uh, the uh, uh, CRRIO4 Good Initiative uh, was recently featured in news. It is, it is related to life skill learning module. Life skill learning module A is the right answer. With reference to the pink uh, bowl worm, consider the following statement. It is a pest and that attack the cotton. Okay. So uh, pink bowl worm. So it is correct. Okay. Then uh, it has been recorded uh, in uh, practically all cotton growing countries throughout the world. So, both are correct. Okay. Then consider the following statement with respect to Law Commission of India. It is a non-statutory body which is constituted by the notification of the Government of India. So, uh, that is uh, correct. Recently, Government has constituted the 22nd Law Commission of India for a period of three years. Here, both are correct. So, thank you for watching. Keep watching regularly to update yourself on the developments. Thank you.